Okay. Did you bother watch the video? Um, I watched Reggie Poo. Other videos. You are very smart, YouTube. but you were not born with the working knowledge of that, so you need to watch the video and take the notes. I just okay. watched a, vi a video on parametric equations. Okay, but that, you didn't watch one. the video. I didn't watch the video. So watch the okay, video yeah, and have good homework. Okay, so everybody else tried it? Yeah. I didn't. Well, let's check oh, scores, yeah. you get in. There are no off days in math class, no. so make sure you get that done. You guys do it? Yep. No off days in math class, get it done. You pick it up where we left off. Okay, so let's, let's not have any more drop balls. I don't know how many more classes we have, but every day we're going to do something. Yeah, oh, we have what we see every day. That's really so I think good. I should know that. Okay. No, we see you on that. We see you So we are ready in the notes for problem five, which is what's in the list. We're going to talk a little bit about the ellipse and hyperbola today. What is the ellipse? It's, okay, so the shape of it is basically an oval, right? I am interested in the mathematical definition of it. So an ellipse by definition, right there where it says ellipse equals the set of points in a plane, the sum of these distances from two fixed points. We are in our notes. This is problem number five. We're writing down the definition of an ellipse. So while you're writing that down, let me show you what that definition means. So you said you know that an ellipse is like an oval. This guy right here, this is called the major axis of the ellipse because it's the long direction. This would be called the minor axis of the ellipse. And these two fixed points are going to be located somewhere on the major axis. So here are the two fixed points that are part of the definition. What the definition means is, if I pick a point on the ellipse, let's say this one right here, and I measure this distance and it is seven, and this distance and it is four. I'm totally making up those numbers. And then I pick another point on the ellipse, like maybe right here, and this is three, then this would have to be eight because the sum of those distances is the same for every point on the curve. That's what the definition means. Those two fixed points are called the foci. Those of you that were here yesterday or watched the video know that the definition of a parabola is what? Set of points in a plane. Equidistant from a given point and a given line. And what is that given point called? The focus. <coughs> These are two focus points. Foci. Okay. So what is the equation of an ellipse? Well, I want you to stop for a second and think about what the equation of a circle looks like. Here is, this is, I'm making this up. This is the equation of a circle, right? Tell me about this circle. Its center is at negative one, one three, three, and its radius is five. five. Okay, that equation could actually be written like this. Would you agree with that? Same equation. So this is the equation of a circle centered at negative 1, 3, with a radius of 5. Well, if you look at the equation there in 5a, what is different about this equation than the one I just erased, which was a circle? The number is below or different. The number is below or different. And remember, the, the one I just erased, those were 25s, which meant the radius was 5. Well, these aren't the same. So there's two different radii. 
you have an x radius and you have a y radius. So our center, the same thing as before, so our center is going to be at 3, negative 1. But this 4 tells me that in the x direction, my radius is 2. So 1, 2. So that would be 1, negative 1. And 1, 2, that would be 5, negative 1. So in the x direction, I'm going back and forth 2. What am I doing in the y direction? Mm -hmm. Up and down 3. So 1, 2, 3. So that would be 3, 2. And 1, 2, 3. 3, negative 4. And there is your ellipse. Isn't that easy? Easy. <coughs> now, we're just learning this, we're just beginning, no sense in overcomplicating it, but do these numbers have to be perfect squares? No, if that was a 10, I would simply go back and forth through 10, right? So they don't have to be squares, it's easier when they're squares. This is your major axis. It is six units long because we went up and down three. The minor axis is four units long because we went sideways two. Is it your, it's your major because it's longer? longer. It's the major longer. means longer, huh? Now in the hyperbola, it's <coughs> a little bit different, but uh, for an ellipse, yep, it's all about how long you are. All right, so let's look at the next one. Take a look at what's given. These four points, by the way, that we connected to make the shape, those are called the vertices. They're also the endpoints of the minor axis and the major axis, but they're called vertices. So see if you can do B. Your job is to come up with an equation that looks like the one we just graphed. to be able to figure this out. Are you figuring it out? Where do you think your center is? 1-1. One, one. One, one. Everybody good with 1-1? One, one? So x minus 1, y minus 1, that's what we have in our equation, a center at 1-1. One, one. there, that means that he is counting up and down 8. Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay. And then that means you're going sideways 7. Is that what you got? So easy. So easy. Alright. That's kind of over now. The easy part. Because now your job is to find the center and vertices of this thing. Oh. Now, let's stop for a second and think about yesterday we had an equation that looks something like, I, I don't remember, I'll just make this up, but something like this. And that was a parabola. How do we know that's a parabola and this is not? What's the characteristic, the, the absolute, beyond a doubt, you got a parabola if what? Only one letter is squared. We don't care if it's X or Y, but only one can be squared. As soon as you square both of them, then you have either a circle, an ellipse, or a hyperbola. Now, can anybody tell me how I know this is an ellipse? It has an X squared plus a Y squared. That's what circles have. 
but why is this not a circle? Because those coefficients are not the same. Those aren't the same. This is an ellipse. When you have an x squared plus a y squared, add it, that's key, add it, but the coefficients are not the same, then you have an ellipse. If this had been a 9, then I wouldn't have an ellipse, I'd have a circle. Okay. So, my job. My job is to make this equation look like that one. Because if I can make my equation look like that, then it's easy. I can find the center and the vertices. So what do you think we're going to need to do here? Move the 23 over the other side. What? Move the 23 over the other side. I sound like a great idea, Jack. I think I'll do that. Should you get like the, like the x's together, together and the y's together? Maybe get the x's together. So 9x so squared minus 18x. And 4y squared plus 8y. Okay. So far, so good. We just got our 9x. Okay, now we got to be careful. Remember, our goal is that. So I need to get these things. I need to get quantities squared. Okay, so if I take out a 9 and a 4, I'm so fine with that. That's fine, but it still doesn't give me what I need, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Danica? Wouldn't you have to add like values to each one to make it in the perfect <coughs> What do we call that? I don't remember. Completing the, 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 square, the square. square. So the we square. need to complete the square on these guys. So like Danica said, and kind of all of you were getting there, this is going to be a perfect square. I have to make that happen. And then this is going to be a perfect square after I make that happen. So here we go. So what will make one. this? One, one. Okay, how do we do that? You're right, it is one. What's, how do we complete the square? What's our thought process? The path of this square, right? The path of it square. So we're gonna make that a one. But be careful, be careful. That one is really a Nine. All right, and what's this one? It's going to be one. It's going to be one again. But it's really a four. But it's really a four. Oh, that works out to 36. This is, this is the kind of thing math teachers do in our free time as we read this kind of stuff. <laughs> okay? So we have <coughs> nine x minus one squared, right? That's a perfect square. You built it that way. Plus four, y plus one squared equals 36. 36. Now we're gonna divide by 36, and we have x minus one squared over four, y plus one squared over, oh, over nine, equal to one. Now, obviously, if I just stood up here and randomly made up a problem, that would not happen, right? Chances are it would be all yicky and messy. But again, these don't have to be perfect squares. We can deal with messiness. Okay, so go ahead, find the center and vertices. Center is easy. Where's your center? One negative one. One negative one. Okay, let's find our vertices. There should be four of them.
one, two. Okay. Um, three, negative one. Okay. Um, one, negative four. Yep. And then negative one, negative one. Everybody okay with that? Good? Okay. All right. Super easy. Now, I want to try, I want to do one more. This is not in your packet. Maybe you have a little over to the side or something. But since so many of us were absent yesterday, I want to make sure we go through one more parabola. Um, so let's do this. is a parabola. This is an extra problem, not in your packet. You have extra practice. This is a parabola. I know because I have two variables, but only one of them is squared. Okay? Now, my goal is to put this into the parabola standard form, just like you did with your ellipse equation, because once you get it into that form, then you can find all the stuff that you need. The preferred form for a parabola equation is something squared equals a number times something not squared. That's kind of what we're shooting for. Alright? So, again, I need a quantity squared. So I'm going to go through that completing the square process on my y's. So, probably let's add that 3 and get him out of there. And now it's completely up to you. We can either factor out the 1 8th or we can just times everything by 8. You cannot complete the square with a coefficient on y squared or x squared. You can't do it. So you can certainly factor it out if you want. Or, in this case, it's easier, let's just multiply everything by 8. You with me? Now, what's going to complete the square? 256. 256. Half of 32 squared. Now, because there's nothing else over here, I'm going to just add 256 to this side. So this is y plus 16 squared. And this is going to be 8x plus what? 280. What is it? 280. 280. Got to factor that 8 out. So x plus, what's 280 divided by 8? 35. Is it going evenly? Yeah. Perfect. All right, are we okay with that, guys? Did you keep up with all that? It's exactly what you just did with the ellipse, but you only do it with one variable because you only have one square. All right, where's your vertex? Negative 35, negative 16, so I'm just going to kind of put it here. Which way does it open? Sideways, right or left? Right. right. Opens to the right. So let's refresh our our memory on that. And remember, parabolas have one squared. X squared is up and down. You have graphed y equals x squared since freshman year. That's up or down. Y squared is right and left. If this coefficient is positive, then we open right. Negative is left. Okay? Now, our focus, here's my axis of symmetry, or line of symmetry. Our focus is always inside the parabola. This distance is P. For some reason we call P, I don't know. 
p. This number right here, this coefficient that is attached to the not squared term, that coefficient is always 4p. So if 4p, it's always 4p, always, whatever it is. If 4p is 8, then p is 2. So I'm going to start at my vertex and go forward 2, which is going to put me at negative 33, negative 16. And since the definition of parabola is equidistant from point in line, if I went forward 2 for my focus, I'm going to come backward 2 for my directrix. And the equation of that line will be x equals negative 37. This right here, that segment actually has a name. It's called the latus rectum of the parabola. But its length, the length of that is called the focal width. It's the width of the parabola through the focus. And this number right here is the focal width. So the focal width of that parabola is 8. So if you needed to plot a couple more points, you could start at your focus and go up 4 and down 4. And that would be um, the end points of your line structure. Okay? So the reason I wanted to do that was because for all of our conics, we're going to have to complete the square to get them into standard form. So with ellipse, we did it with x and y both. With the parabola, we did it with only one of them. All right, we'll do one more before lunch. We're going to talk a little bit about the hyperbola. Will someone read the definition of an ellipse that you wrote down? What did you write down for any of this? Beautiful. Now, definition of a hyperbola, word for word the same, except where it says the sum of these difference distances is now going to be the difference of these distances. So the definition of a hyperbola is exactly the same, word for word. Change the word S-U-M to the word difference. The set of points in a plane, the difference of these distances from two fixed points is constant. The definitions are virtually identical with just that one word change. Take a look at this equation. Isn't the shape of that equation identical <coughs> to the ellipse we looked at? Except what? There's a minus. There's a minus because what's a hyperbola? The difference of whose distances is constant, right? So your hyperbola is going to have a minus in there. Okay. Tell me about this hyperbola. Uh, it's center is going to be at 2, negative 1. Center is going to be at 2, negative 1. What does that 9 tell me to do? Exactly, so 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, negative 1, beautiful, and? And the 14 is telling you to, I mean, it's not, the 16 is telling you to go 4 up and 4 down one, to two, the three, wire vertices. 4, so 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, negative 5. Are you all with me to here? Just exactly the same as we did before, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if that were a plus, I would take these points and just make a nice little oval with them. It is not a plus. So I'm going to take those same four points, but I'm going to build a box through them. A rectangle. So instead of 
instead of making an oval, you're going to make a rectangle. And then you're going to draw in the diagonals of the rectangle. Okay, so, so far it's the same, except instead of the oval, we made a box, and then we drew our rectangle. Now, in this hyperbola, X comes first. That matters. Whatever letter comes first in a hyperbola is the direction the curve opens. So, since X comes first, this hyperbola is going to be a horizontal one. These points right here on the box, when you built the box, those points are the vertices. These are the vertices of the hyperbola. Now, you're thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, there's ones at the top and the bottom. Yes, there are. But I won't use those unless y comes first in my equation. Then the curve would look like this. The same set of asymptotes, the same box, builds two hyperboles. And the one you want is whichever letter comes first. Okay? So when it says, what are the vertices, you will say <coughs> negative 1, negative 1, and 5, negative 1. Okay. This is so fun. All right, go ahead. So if you just, you just ask us for the vertices, we really don't even have to find the lines. No. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. so we can really just know from those two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll see you back at 45 in your seat.